Hello everybody, it's me, it's Punctual HD. Welcome back to another episode of the Meta Talk series here in Dragalia Lost. Today's episode, we're going to be discussing a couple units, actually the New Year's units, New Year's, uh, second actually New Year's units, featuring Nobunaga, Mitsuhide, Chitose, and Daiko Kuten. Um, I'm going to be discussing them. I'm actually going to go in order from lights to uh, Nobunaga, because she's the only one that's not light. So I'm going to discuss Nobunaga last. Um, and like I said, first up, Mitsuhide, uh, Nobunaga is going to be last. Second Chitose, Daiko Kuzin is going to be a really quick uh, kind of review over, over him, and then Nobunaga last. So that's going to be the setup for today's video. I'm basically going to discuss how they actually sit into the meta uh, in today's meta. Again, this meta might change with 70 mana circles. There's a lot of variables that might change it. Maybe Agito, the future Agito that's going to come out could change it. But I do suspect the next Agito to come out later this month to be actually light, where you use shadow units. So uh, that's what I'm expecting to see. But again, we'll have to wait and see what actually comes out from it. But anyways, let's actually go ahead and take a look at the DPS sim first for light units and see where Mitsuhide sits on the DPS sim, just as a kind of overview to see how good she is. And first thing you notice is that she's at the very, very top Mitsuhide, literally at the top. Uh, and of course, you see lots of Daikos here too, but I'll discuss Daiko a little bit later. But she's at the very, very top, Twinfold Bond, Spirit of the Season, and yeah, she definitely beats out Floor, as you can see by this. Beats out Floor, um, not by a lot, but she does beat out Floor by about 700 DPS. Again, this is, of course, everything taken optimally. You're playing completely optimally, no mistakes, etc., which is very hard to do, so you can expect your, your actual DPS to be a little bit lower than this. But... This is just a good overview to get uh, sort of an idea of how good these units are. Now, let's actually discuss Mitsuhide first up. So, Mitsuhide skill 1, it's kind of like Fluor skill 1. You deal damage and you paralyze. Now, this is actually 12 hits, which is a lot of hits, and that's important for a couple of reasons. First being that Twinfold Bonds requires you to have a good chain up for maximum DPS potential, and for her skill 2 and her abilities, which we'll go over in a little bit. So skill 1 is great, para paralyzes, which is again amazing, especially on a skill 1, you have a lot of uptime on that, especially for a low SP cost skill 1, this is a very low SP cost. Uh, you can keep paralysis pretty much at a constant uptime throughout the entire course of the fight, unless somebody else has paralysis, that's where things kind of get a little bit tricky for uptime, but again, just her by herself, she is great for keeping up uptime. Keeping up uptime, that sounds really weird. For keeping uptime on paralysis. Next up, her skill 2 is just one solid hit of light damage. However, uh, you also get an attack rate increase, which is kind of just supplement, like secondary to the actual DPS it brings. However, if you have a combo of 30 hits or higher, you're going to deal 1,500%. You're dealing an extra 500% damage pretty much, which is very, very strong. And that's, again, that's a huge DPS increase if you have a 30 hit or higher combo. Not to mention, let's actually go over it right now. Flurry strength off of her ability means that when your combo count is 15 or higher, you have an extra 20% strength boost which means that this hit is going to deal a lot more damage than just an extra 500% if you have a good combo going up, which is, again, amazing. And that's why your skill 1 is very, very important, because, again, 12 hits pretty much gets you at this Flurry Strength just off of a normal skill 1. Even if, like, you use, you lose your chain, just skill 1, and you do it. And, again, her skill 1 is instant. It goes so fast. It's literally, like, a second second to go through the entire 12 hits. So it's a very strong skill. Uh, next up, let's talk about Cold really quick. Create Cold is amazing. Again, she's, she's a staple in... High Zod, and this Kurei Cold definitely helps out there. Curse Rise, again, High Zod staple. Para Punisher, again, keeping up the uptime with her skill uh, skill 1 means that her ability, Para Punisher, is going to be uh, taken full advantage of. So she's very, very strong, and she's definitely better than Floor. However, she's not much better than Floor. So you could just use Floor in replace of Mitsuhide, which is what we did, obviously, before Mitsuhide was released. But Mitsuhide does get the job done a little bit better, and I would say her playstyle is a little more difficult to use than Floor, simply because you need to keep your, your combo count up, whereas Floor doesn't rely too much on combo count up, whereas Mitsuhide really, really does. Floor just relies on you using your skill 2, or you use skill 1, then skill 2, and then skill 1 again, whereas Mitsuhide, you need to keep your combo up. So she's a little bit more difficult to use. But again, if you are good at the game, if you can keep your combos up, She's definitely going to be better than Floor, and she's definitely cements her spot as the main DPS in High Zod. As you can see, she's literally at the very top. So definitely cements her spot as the main DPS in High Zod. Now, I do want to mention, actually, she's at the top probably only because Luka doesn't have Spirit of the Season here. And um, I don't think that, you know, it doesn't take into account Paralysis. Plus, I don't think it takes really into account the buffs that Gal Luka gets. So with that, he's probably higher, but we don't talk about that. We just say Mitsuhide is at the top. GG, no read. Next up, let's talk about Chitose. So, Chitose on the DPS sim is obviously second, and that's mainly because obviously this huge red buff is 
his uh, skill one, which is his strength buff. So his strength buff is really, really strong. Anyone with the skill one that has a strength buff is just uh, honestly really, really good. Like, for instance, look at Emma and Noel. They're both top tier units simply because of their skill one strength buff. So he also brings the cobility of skill damage, which is a solid cobility to have. Again, strength buff skill one is very, very solid. 15 second buff, again, is, is very nice to have. Uh, his skill two is not really that useful, so we're not really going to talk about it. You really don't see this in action too much. Uh, again, skill, or not skill, ability one also. It's a shield that really doesn't have its usage, I would say. Curse Rest is good for high Zod, and defensive stance is pretty bad. It lowers his strength, but increases defense, which I guess is okay with the shield that he brings, but like, again, you're lowering your own strength, which is the most important thing in Dragali Loss. DPS is pretty much the name of Dragali Loss, so lowering your DPS is not a good thing, and that kind of does suck for him. However, like I said, he's mainly just there for team buffing, and he's very solid with it. He doesn't actually have an innate buff ability on him, which kind of hurts him just a little bit. If he had that, if he had that, I feel like he would be probably Emma level or Noel tier level, but he doesn't have this, so I feel like he's a little bit below them. He's actually not even used on the optimal Hyzod team composition, which is, again, kind of unfortunate, but I would say it's really due to him not having good abilities. Like, both these abilities are pretty bad, to be completely honest, so that's probably the reason. Also, skill 2 is, is pretty bad as well, so those make him not, I would say, like a tier S plus unit, but he's still very solid and easily to use. And Mikro Gauntlet, he's definitely really, really solid. Again, that skill one buff is very good. It's just a little bit high for an SP cost, but again, it's still very, very good. Get, definitely gets his mileage all on it. And he's definitely good for it. Uh, but again, he's not really using High Zod too much. You don't see him in High Zod. You usually use like a double Gaul Yudin or Hunter Vanessa Melora, and then you use your two DPS like Yacho or Gaul Luka slash Mitsuhide slash Floor. So uh, she's just not really used, which kind of sucks, but he is very, very good. And in Mirko Gaul, I feel like that's where he really shines, not High Zod. So that's my thoughts on Chitose. Again, a very good unit. Mitsuhide uh, is an amazing unit. The Mitsuhide, Mirko Gaul used, uh, High Zod used, easily, you know, strongest uh, tier S plus light unit in the game right now. So also, I want to say Chitose in the background is so cute. <laughs> Chitose in the background is so cute. And yes, I said cute. Ah, oh, I uh, he just is going to bully me for that. Anyways. Next up, Daiko Kutin. I'm going to discuss Daiko very quickly, uh, mainly because I feel like there's not really too much to discuss when it comes to him. Basically, his skill uh, has a, an attack rate buff for adventures inside it by 20% for 10 seconds. Again, solid, but not really what you use him for. Whereas, you know, like Cupid, you use him for the heal. Uh, you don't really use Daiko for his skill. However, you use him for his abilities. It's only 5% less strength than what Cupid offers. However, you get 25% Flurry Strength, which is very, very solid. Again, there's so many units that you're going to keep your comp up very easily anyways, you know, especially Daggers. It's very easy to keep your comp up with Daggers. So this is basically just a free, like, 20%. I know it's not exactly 20%. It's not an additive, but basically, you know, just factoring it in, it's 20% Strength Increase over Cupid. So uh, Daiko is very, very strong. As you can see here, he's uh, optimal on a lot of units that it's easy to keep your combos up, you know, mainly daggers and wands. There's a couple units where he's not optimal on, and those are the units that inflict paralysis um, and actually, like, deal lots of force strike damage or deal damage with their main normal attacks. That's, you know, being Hunter Vanessa, um, Axes, because, again, Axes is kind of hard to keep your combo up as well uh, since they attack very, very slowly. Gaul unit as well, because he's a sword. Uh, those kinds of units, I would say, you know, use them as it shows. Use Cupid, use uh, Crusade Phoenix or something. But Daiko is definitely best in slot for Daggers. Daggers, it's very easy to keep your calm up. Again, same thing with Wands. And he's definitely cementing himself as a very solid dragon for the light category. Again, amazing. Would I recommend using your stones on him or Cupid, though? Honestly, I would say use them on Cupid, simply because Cupid has more... Uh, unless you're like 100% going for a dagger, I would say use your stones on Cupid because Cupid has more utility with the heal. Again, in Hyzod, having a heal just allows for some errors to be made over the course of the battle and not just straight up die. So again, that's why I would say running a Cupid on your team is uh, very, very solid to have. And I would say Cupid has more utility than Daiko, but Daiko is very solid as well in his own regard, and he is very, very good. Now, last but not least, let's actually discuss Nobunaga. Let's check out where she sits on the DPS sim. You know, the big old thighs, where does she sit? Well... If we go over to Nobunaga, we can see she's not even existent. Nobunaga, we see Reina over here. There's Reina. Where's Nobunaga? And there she is. Again, she's above Mikoto, at least. Mikoto's like way down here. She's above Mikoto, but she's she's just not she's not she's not a tier S unit, at least for Flynn. That, that's all I'm gonna say. She's not a tier S unit. Uh, let's actually discuss her kit and we can actually talk about Nobunaga a little bit more in depth and why she's not up to par with Reina currently. So let's go over here to Nobunaga. Again, Nobunaga's thighs, though, oh, broke back, broke back thighs. 
Anyways, so her skill one is basically you deal a one hit at 475% of flame damage, and then after 30 seconds of, of burning ambition, um, you, you, they take one hit of 560% damage. Now, burning ambition doesn't stack, and it cannot be reapplied to enemies still affected by it. That's probably the biggest part that hurts her, that you cannot stack burning ambition and you cannot reapply it, you know, if they already have it. That that's the biggest that's the biggest thing. You also can dispel it, which is good. If you couldn't dispel it, it would honestly be a terrible skill. But you can dispel it, which is good. But the things that hurt so much, this skill one had so much potential. If they up these modifiers, it had so much potential. But since they have these such like so low mods, they're just not really that good. Like uh bleed, you have basically a normal attacking skill one, and then you have an extra like 500 plus percent just off of bleed and then you can stack it multiple times and deal more damage based on the stacks bleed is just ridiculous but burning ambition doesn't have that i guess they just didn't want to make another bleed type scenario with burning ambition i don't know why they didn't just give her bleed i feel like just giving her bleed would solve so many things like bleed like that's already a mechanic in the game that would be so much easier to like program than burning ambition but they decided to go this route again this is a very low mod 450 percent is, is terribly low like it's not even worth doing using the skill if you can't apply burning ambition um it's not even worth using the skill to be honest but like i said if they give her a 70 mana node of, in the future and they make these modifiers higher like if they made it a thousand percent 500 percent that would be ridiculous she would definitely be a tier s unit like just that alone an extra 500 percent mod would make her so much better like i can't even describe how much better she would be with that mod she would be ridiculously good but again unfortunately she's not like that right now and i assume with 70 mana nodes that she's they're not going to buff her that much uh, also her sp cost at 3300 is a little over two full chains which again hurts her a little bit as well so uh yeah just kind of these things kind of just weigh her down and uh, make, her, make her not a tier one unit now it says you can dispel it and it's gonna you know be triggered if it does dispel you can dispel it off of her skill two which is solid you skill one then skill two again you could skill one twice before you can skill two once but uh you can also dispel with her ability her set her third ability actually let's talk about world's dream your four strike if your comma account is 15 or higher can dispel the enemy buff which is again very solid her kit flows together so well flurry strength as well again her kit just flows together so well world's dream flurry strength flows together so well she has such strong abilities besides sleep res, sleep res is kind of bad for hms but um she has such strong abilities it's just her skill one really hurts her again if she had better mods off that or if her skill two had better mods or something like really good mods she would be so much better but because of the mods, she's just not that good. As you can see here, she's not there. Again, something to mention is that this is her without any burn. Again, this is Primal Crisis rather than something like Elegant Escort. So if you're running her with a burn unit, you can run Elegant Escort on her. And I believe her DPS will actually be higher than Reyna if you do that. But, um, you know, just she had just, she's had so much more potential, really. She had so much more potential. And she's actually a lot more difficult to use. Because, again, she's only this strong when you can keep your combo count up. And then you skill one, dispel it right away. You skill two, skill one, dispel, etc. You need to have your combo count up for her to be this good. If you don't have your combo count up, she's not this good, like, at all. She's, as you can see, much, much lower if you cannot keep your combo count up. So, uh, yeah, that's actually pretty much all I have to say about these units. Again, Mitsuhide is the real prize of this banner. It's not often, actually, we see that the 5-star is the real prize, uh, I would say. There's been a lot of banners recently with 4-stars as the best units. Like, uh, say take, take, for instance, the Joaquim and Kirsty banner. Joaquim was actually the uh, the prize on that banner. Also, Halloween, I would say Halloween Loan was the prize on that banner. I say not a lot, but it actually does happen a lot where the 5-stars are the better units. But, like, it's it's a pleasant surprise, I should say, when the 4-stars are better. And Jitose is a very solid 4-star as well. You know, better than Nobunaga, unfortunately. Lee, you know, RIP to the thighs. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about um about this banner again. Mitsuhide amazing. Nobunaga, not really. Chitose is good for MG mainly. And Daiko is again another great substitute for Cupid and actually better than Cupid in some situations as well. Uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about this banner. Uh, give me your thoughts in the comments down below. Did you summon when this banner came out a while ago? I definitely do think it was worth summoning if if and only if you needed help on Shadow Micro Gauntlet. Or you wanted to hit a for um for high zod, or because you know limited units might get 70 mana circles in the future. Who really knows? And yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day, and until next time, have a nice trip.